Let's look at kinematics. Okay, so what I'll do here, guys, is I'm just going to go over the key concepts and key skills from that unit, and then I'll go into some examples of each one after that, and then I'll take questions from you, anything you want me to cover in more detail. All right, so we started out kinematics, reviewing some basic stuff from Science 10. That would have been vectors and scalars. And V equals D over T of both varieties, vector and scalar. Is it important for you to remember which things are vector and which things are scalar? Yeah. Yes. And not because I'm going to have multiple choice questions going, speed, vector, or scalar. No, I don't care. I'm not going to do that. Okay. But on the written response part, if you get an acceleration question and it asks you to calculate the initial velocity, you need to include a direction on that. Or if you get a gravitational net force question, you might need to write towards the sun on your answer as net force is a vector quantity. So that's kind of where the vector stuff comes in, okay? more in remembering what things actually need a vector and what things don't. It also matters because you calculate vector quantities a little bit different than you calculate scalar quantities. So, um, you know, if we're talking about somebody who's walking from one place to another, okay, calculating their overall distance and their overall displacement is a little bit different because displacement would be a straight line, whereas distance would be they went this way, they went this way, they went this way, and we add them all together. So little things like that are things that would be important to remember. Okay? Are there going to be written response questions on just V equals D over T? No. There's probably not even any multiple choice questions on V equals D over T because quite frankly, that's beneath you. But you still need to be able to use V equals D over T in a projectile motion problem, possibly in a vector component addition problem, and in waves, right? If you have an echo question or something like that, okay? V equals D over T uh, is certainly still gonna be something you need to know how to use. Hopefully you haven't forgotten because that's about the easiest thing we did in the whole course. Okay. All right, after vectors and scalars, we talked about graphing. Okay. Specifically, we talked about position versus time graphs and velocity versus time graphs. There are some multiple choice questions about graphing and there's some written response questions about graphing. So make sure you review your graphing skills. Some of it is interpretation and some of it is calculation. So the multiple choice items would be more like interpretation. So here's a position versus time graph and it's got a curve on it. What kind of motion is being shown? Okay, that could be something that would be an interpretation type question. In the written response, you could get a graph, maybe it's you know, even got the equation of the line, y equals mx plus b on it, and you're going to be asked to calculate some stuff from it. Okay? All stuff that we did in our labs, okay? stuff you're fully capable of. Or you could get an irregular graph, and, you know, like a, a velocity versus time graph, and be asked to calculate the total displacement from the shapes underneath it, things like that. All things that we did. Okay? But definitely expect that I'm going to ask you to show me that you can still demonstrate those skills. All right. You will not be asked to build a graph, obviously, on the test. Okay? The graph will already be built. You'll just calculate the product. After that, we talked about acceleration. There could be some simple calculations for acceleration in the multiple choice. Because time's a factor on a final exam, I'm not likely to put an acceleration problem okay, in the written response. And I don't need to because 
you need to use an excel you need to use acceleration formulas in projectile motion problems. So I'll see if you can do it there. Okay. And in some net force calculations from unit two. Right. So on the exam, you're gonna find that some of the written response items are combining ideas from two different units. Okay, so if I give you a dynamics question, but it's got final velocity and initial velocity, that's me making the test shorter. Okay, that's saying I'm not gonna waste and put a whole other question on here about acceleration when I can test it as part of something else. Okay, that means fewer questions on the test, makes the test easier for you, shorter for you. Right, so I will do that from time to time. There'll still be things that you've seen and done in class many times before. Again, I'm not gonna throw something new at you. All right, so expect problem solving. We talked about a whole bunch of different formulas. Obviously, they're all on your formula sheet because the formula sheet you're gonna get on the unit. Uh, the final exam is exactly the same as the one that you have, minus all the little notes to self you've written on yours, which is, of course, why you're getting the brand new one. Then, we did this. Vector component addition. If I need to add vector quantities, I draw them tail to head, I find all the x's and all the y's, I add the x's and add the y's to get my resultants triangle, I use Pythagorean theorem to get my resultants, trigonometry to get my direction, done. Definitely going to be one of those in the written response of your final exam. Okay. And again, that's something I could combine with dynamics. Okay. So I could have a question in the dynamics part that is, here's two forces. Force is a vector quantity. Find the acceleration of the object, and you'd have to show me your vector addition capabilities as part of a second law question. Okay. Again, that's combining okay, two units together, shortening the test. So you show me you know how to use f equals n times a and how to do vector sum of all forces by showing me your vector addition skills. Okay. That sort of makes sense? Right. It isn't any different than if I said, here's a displacement vector and here's a displacement vector, add them together, it's the same thing, just end up with newtons instead of meters. Okay, and then after vector component addition, then we went on to projectile motion. two types of projectile motion problems. We went over um, projected horizontally, so like a car drives off a cliff kind of questions. And we went over um, projected at an angle questions, so the general lead jumps over the river okay, kind of questions. The first question in the written response of the final exam is a projectile motion question. Okay. The reason I'm putting that on there, it tests projectile motion, it tests acceleration, it tests V equals D over T, it tests vector components. Okay. It tests four things in one question. So definitely going to have one of those on there. Okay. That is the first question in the written response. Question number one. Okay. Picture of Mr. Dickey at West Edmonton. Okay. They don't have these things there anymore, but they used to have these fountains. And they would make this projectile arc and you could stand up at me. Okay. And there's a picture of Mr. Dickey. This looking very nerdy. Okay. <laughs> Watching the water go over his head. Okay. Um, so there's a projectile motion question, it's the first one. Okay. That's it. That's what's in unit one. Okay. We had to do all that stuff because they was, those were kind of some of the base skills we needed to do unit two vector addition and stuff like that. Okay. So let's have a look at the kinds of things you might be asked to do as questions on the test. So let's, um, let's look at graphing first.
So I got this position versus time graph. I want you to calculate the total distance traveled. Give you a minute. Okay, so the total distance traveled is eight meters because in the first five seconds, the object didn't go anywhere. Okay, this is the position versus time graph. A flat line tells us no movement. Okay, then it backed up three meters. Now for distance, it doesn't matter that it backed up, just that it went three meters. Then it didn't go anywhere again. And then it went five meters between 10 and 15 seconds. All right, so three plus five, eight meters. That's my total distance. What's my total displacement? Two meters. Okay, how did I calculate my total displacement? Well, okay, how do I calculate displacement? Okay, well, displacement is final position minus initial position, that's eight minus six, two meters, positive two meters. Okay, um, what's the average speed over the whole trip? speed is total distance over total time. We already calculated the total distance. The total distance was 8 meters. The total time is 15 seconds. So it's what, uh, 0 0.6 something? 0 0.53. 0 0.53. 0 0.53 meters per second, my average speed. If I wanted to calculate my average velocity, same idea. Average velocity Okay, is total displacement over total time. That's 2 over 15. Okay, um, that's two. Uh, 0.13, positive 0.13 meters per second. Right. So you can very easily be asked to do something like that with an irregular position versus time graph. Questions on that? Um, another thing you could be asked. Okay. I give you a position versus time graph that is a linear function. And I give you the equation for that line. Y equals 5.2 plus 5, uh, times x plus 15.7. What's the velocity? 5.2 meters per second. Okay. The slope of the line on this graph is the velocity. Okay. The reason for that, if I solve for slope, okay, 5.2 is going to be y minus b over x. That's y minus, so that's final position. Okay, final position minus initial position divided by time. That's how we calculate velocity, right? Okay, so that's why that the slope of the line represents the velocity. Textbook. Uh, yearbooks? Yearbooks, okay. Cool. Okay, what else might I ask you to do with that? Right, find the value of a specific point. So I might ask you, for example, what would the position of the object be after 25 seconds? Right, so if I ask you to calculate what the position would be after 25 seconds, I'm asking you to calculate y when x is 25. So you just plug it in your numbers and calculating what y is. Similarly, I could ask you how long it would take to reach a position of 150 meters. In which case, now I'm giving you that y equals 150 and asking you to solve for x. Very clear on that? So it could be either one of those situations because we've done both. 
obviously our lab had more to do with this, okay, where we had the carts okay, on the ground. Okay, questions on position versus time graphs? It'll be one or the other. All right, the other thing I could give you velocity versus time graph, but it's irregular. And I might ask you to calculate for me, uh, what is the acceleration between 0 and 5 seconds? 0. Right, that would be worth one mark. Why is it 0? The velocity is not changing. Acceleration is a change in velocity. All that's asking you is, do you remember the definition of acceleration? Okay, acceleration is a change in velocity. There's no velocity change, there's no acceleration. All right, I could also ask you, what is the acceleration between five seconds and seven seconds? That would require a calculation, okay? That would require us to use this formula. Okay, my final velocity would be negative four. My initial velocity would be six. And that's gonna take two seconds. So, negative 5 meters per second squared would be my acceleration. Everybody all right with that one? Okay. The last thing I might ask you to find is the total displacement over the entire trip. How do we do that? Right. I've got to calculate the displacement. That's the area under the line. The reason it's the area under the line is because that's going to be average velocity times time for each section of the graph. All right. So if I'm finding the displacement here in the first five seconds, the average velocity is six meters per second times five seconds, 30 meters. Here, the velocity is changing from six to zero. So the average is three, the height over two. Follow me there? Okay, and that occurs over one second. So um, we're gonna have, yeah, three times one second. So that's just gonna be three meters okay, for that part there. And then, okay, for this part here, I've got uh, it going from zero to four. So the height would, the half the height would be negative two times one, okay, divided by two. Oh, I forgot to divide that by two, didn't I? Um, Oh, I did, that's right, and this one I did too. So negative two a times one, so this is negative two meters here. And then I've got this block here, okay, the average velocity during that part is negative four, that goes on for four seconds, so that's negative 16 meters. And then I've got this that has a height of four, so I use the average, which is negative two times two is negative four meters, All right? Now I've calculated, calculated the displacement in each part of the graph, and I just add them all together. So I've got 33, 31, 17, 13. Positive 13 meters, I think. I'm going to do it with a calculator to confirm. 33, 31, 15, yeah. Yeah, 11, you're right. See, that's why I shouldn't do it in my head. Positive 11 meters would be my overall displacement there. Okay. Could very easily get something like that. All right, but all things we were asked to do in class, okay? Now, our lab was on acceleration for velocity versus time graphs, so you could also get 
same type of graph we had for the second thing on position versus time except for velocity versus time. And again, I give you the equation. Okay, so y equals um, what's the acceleration? 9.81 meters per second squared, but it's up because I drew the line up. Um, what's my initial velocity? 1.5 meters per second. Okay. So if I was asking you stuff, that's the kind of thing I might ask, or I might ask you what would the velocity be after 20 seconds, or how long would it take to reach a velocity of 100 meters per second? Same kind of calculations you're asked to do with the position versus time graph, just manipulating y equals mx plus b. But there's one last thing I could ask you to do, and it's what I asked you to do on your um, lab. What is the overall displacement of the object to a time of, let's say, 10 seconds? How would I do that? Right. Same way I did it on the other graph. I just have different shapes. I've got a triangle sitting on top of a rectangle. I just have to find their dimensions. Okay. The rectangle's easy. It's got a height of 1.5, that's what the y-intercept tells us, and a base of 10, so it's 15 meters. That part was pretty straightforward. Okay. We know the base of the triangle is 10 seconds, but what we don't know is the height of the triangle. So we'll need to use this equation in order to get it. Right, so um, I'll calculate what y is okay, here using the equation. So I'll go 9.81 times x, so 98.1, plus 1.5, so 99.6, okay, would be this point. But I actually don't want to have this 1.5 added to it. I just want the height of the triangle. So I'm actually going to go back to having the height of the triangle be 98.1. Okay. Um, then I'm set. Okay. Everybody all right with that? Okay, so I calculate the area of the triangle, so 98.1 um, and times 10 divided by 2, okay. and, and we're set on that. So uh, 1 times 10, 981, uh, 4.5. Anyway, that's okay. You get the area underneath the line. Everybody okay with that? All right, those are the things I would ask you to do with a graphing question. All right, um, we said there's not going to be any like acceleration problems, but acceleration is part of projectile motion, so we'll go over it when we do that. Next thing, vector component addition. So I'm going to put one up here. I want you guys to write it down and try it before I walk through it. Okay. on that one. Okay, I'm not going to do the whole thing, but at least get you started here by drawing the vector diagram, which is kind of the first step. Okay, uh, so our first vector is 18.5 meters at 30 degrees south of west. Okay, so I'm going to draw a reference line that's west, and then I'm going to go 30 degrees south of that. I don't know why I drew it so far now. Okay, um, Eighteen point five meters. Okay, this is x. This is y. And let me start. Okay. Um, then our next one is going to be four point six five meters at ten degrees east of north. So it's going to go up and back 
against itself. So it's going opposite it completely. So what I have to do is kind of figure out, is it gonna get past here? Is it gonna be down here somewhere? Okay, and all I have to do is look at this. This is why I picked a 30 degree angle, because the sine of 30 is what? 0.5, right? So that means that y is half of this number, right? Which is nine and three quarters. So um, nine and a quarter. Okay, uh, so I know then that this 4.65 meters is only getting about halfway up here. And so I'm going to just draw okay, this line here, that line there, that angle is 10 degrees. Okay, um, this will be y, that will be x, this will be 4.65 meters. So I'm reflecting my scale here, making sure that I draw this accurately to scale. That means that my resultant will look like that. It will be my overall displacement. Okay? This will be my overall angle, x and y. Okay, so that's what our vector diagram should look like. It's a bit busy because it overlaps itself so much. Okay, I'll give you a few more minutes to see if you can finish that one up. Okay, so let's walk through what this is going to look like okay, in terms of how we solve it. So once we have the diagram drawn, the next thing to do is to calculate all the x's and all the y's. So break all the vectors down into their x and y components. All right, so black x, all right, so this side of the black triangle is the adjacent side to the 30 degree angle. So that's going to be the cos of 30 degrees times 18.5 um, meters. So 16.02 meters. I'll keep all those decimals in my calculator though. Okay, I'm not rounding off. Okay. Uh, black Y, opposite side, okay, and we already said that's gonna be nine and a quarter, but it's the sine of 30 times 18.5, so that'll be 9.25 meters. Now this one is west, this one is south. Okay, important to indicate the direction of those. For my red vector, okay, uh, y is the adjacent side of my red vector, x is the opposite side. So red x is going to be um, the sine of 10 degrees times the hypotenuse, which was 4.65. Okay, so that's 0.807. Meters and that is east. And then red y is the adjacent side, so that's going to be the cos of 10 times 4.65. Okay, so that's going to be 4.579. Meters and that's north. All right, so now I've found all the x's and all the y's. Now I've got to take those x's, add them together, take the y's, add them together, in order to get my resultants, x and y. So blue x okay, is going to be 16.02 meters west minus 0.807 meters east. So we'll have our 16.02. that one. So 15.21 meters and that is west and then my resultants y, okay, that'll be 9.25 meters minus uh, my north which was uh, point uh, which was 4.579. So 4.67 meters south. Okay, so now I've got blue X and blue Y. What do I do with them? All right, 
I use Pythagorean theorem in order to get the magnitude of my overall displacement. overall displacement of 15.9 because uh, we have, actually it'll be 16 because we only have two significant digits okay and then I have to find theta all right so I've got to use X and Y in order to get my angle here so Y is opposite X is adjacent all right so I'm going to go tan to the minus one of opposite so that'll be the 4.6 uh, 7, okay, divided by the adjacent, 15.21, and that'll get me my angle. All right, so I'm getting 17, no, 17 degrees, because I only have two significant digits, 17 degrees, which direction? South of west. Okay, so my overall answer is going to be 16 meters at 17 degrees south of west, or if you drew the triangle the other way, 16 meters at 73 degrees west of south would also work. Okay, is that ringing a bell? Right. Obviously on a unit exam, I probably wouldn't give you one that had two angled, um, in fact on your unit exam I didn't give you one that had two angled vectors, I gave you one that was horizontal or vertical still have to show me all this stuff, but it doesn't take quite as long. Um, I don't know if I want to be that detailed. Yeah. There's vector addition on there. Okay. No. Okay, I'll be that detailed. No. There's no post question on the final. All right. Um, any other questions on the vector one? Okay. Then last thing to go over, projectile motion. Okay, so I'm going to put one up here and see if you guys remember how to do it. Projectile launched at 200 meters per second, 40 degrees above the horizontal. I want you to calculate the total horizontal displacement and the maximum height of the projectile. All right, so if we launch this projectile, what it's going to do is follow this arc and encounter the ground back down over here. Okay, this motion has two parts to it the vertical part and the horizontal part, which we have to treat separately because they only share one thing. What is it? Time. Okay, so if you remember that, that's a good start. Okay, this projectile's triangle is essentially broken up into the horizontal part. So this side here would represent the horizontal component of that 200 meters per second. Horizontally, the velocity does not change because there's nothing to slow it down or speed it up. Okay? So if I calculate this side of the triangle, that's going to calculate V horizontal, which will be useful over here. Right? To do that, I would go cos of 40 degrees times 200. Okay? I'm finding the x component of that vector. So 153.21. Meters per second. Now, similarly, there is a vertical component to this velocity. But vertically speaking, the object is going to accelerate due to gravity. So that's only going to be my initial 
velocity, that side of the triangle. I can calculate that right now. It's the opposite side, so I'd go the sine of, of 40, okay, times 200. Hundred and twenty eight point five six. And that's positive because it's up. All right. The other things I know are that the acceleration is negative nine point eight one meters per second squared, and I know one other thing. If the launching point and the landing point are level. VF and VI are the same. the same, but opposite in direction, okay? Because what goes up comes right back down. If it leaves at um, 128 meters per second and accelerates at 9.81 all the way until it stops, it's falling the exact same distance at the exact same rate of acceleration. It's going to be back on the ground at exactly the same rate that it left at. Does that make sense, everybody? Okay, that's the thing we have to remember in order to kind of get started on this question, that VF is going to be negative 128.56 meters per second. If I want to find the total horizontal distance traveled, I need V and T. I have V already, but I don't have T. Can I use my vertical information to get T? Yes. All right, so that's my next step. Go back to my vertical information. Okay. Acceleration equals VF minus VI over T. So to solve for T, it'll be VF, negative 128.56, minus VI, 128.56, divided by 9.81. So that number times 2 okay, divided by 9.81 gives me 26.21 seconds. All right, that time can go over to the horizontal part because that's one of the things they share. So 26.21 seconds times 153.21 meters per second is going to give me my total horizontal distance traveled. So horizontally, we're going to travel 4 kilometers, okay. 4.0 times 10 to the 3 um, meters. Okay. That's the first thing they wanted me to find. Now I've got to find the maximum height. So I'm going to go back to my diagram here because something's going to change. The maximum height occurs right here. And it's going to be my vertical displacement at that point. What do I need to know at that point? That Vf is zero. Or that the time is half. Okay. Either way, we'll get to the right answer. Okay. But I'm going to go with Vf equals zero meters per second at this point and use the other information that I had here and go Vf squared equals vi squared plus 2ad and look for d. This is 0, this is 128, that's negative 9.81, right? And I can solve for d. So d will be vf squared minus vi squared over 2 times a. So that's going to be 0 squared. All right, so um, I've got, uh, sorry, my manipulation here, okay? And so it's going to be 0 squared minus um, 128.56 squared divided by 19.62. Okay, that's 2 times 9.81. So, take my 128.56 squared and divide that by 19.62. All right, we're looking at a maximum height of 8.4 times 10 to the 2 meters. And 
That is exactly what I will ask you to do on your final exam with the projectile motion course. Repeat said procedure with different numbers. Anything I didn't cover from unit one that you would like me to go into more detail? Okay, I posted today the final exam review package on Google Classroom. Okay, so it's right here. So in that final exam review uh, package, is kind of an outline of key concepts and skills that for each unit and then on the next page are some old final exam questions with the answers beside them so you can try those as you go along. Will there be a question where I feel like, like a ball rolled off like an angle? No, I'm not going to throw something weird at you. Okay? Like I said, it's Mr. Dickey standing under the water pump. All right, so you guys can uh, you know, do some review stuff here. We got, uh, what, 10 or 15 minutes left. All right, so you can do some final exam review. If more questions come up, just ask, or you can try some of these examples and go from there.